Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm gonna to share with you an exciting new tool for my shop. This is an induction forge, an amazing piece that I think every metal shop should have after using it for just one day. Check it out. So this is the induction forge. This is from a company called US Solid. Um, and this thing runs off of 220 volt electric. And right now I have it hooked up to a 50 amp outlet. Now what this thing does is it uses electromagnetism um, through a transformer inside this machine to heat material that's placed inside this coil. There is distilled water that gets pumped through the machine and the machine cannot run without a coolant running through it. Now some people when they get these just run like a garden hose in one end and let it dump out the back but I've actually got a water chiller down below it that will run constantly and by having this thing plugged in and hooked up I can simply turn on the water cooler and then turn on the machine and that noise you hear is all the noise this really makes aside from some beeping. So there's some controls here on the front of the unit and you have output current and then you have an auto and manual setting. Now I have mine on manual, which means when I push the foot pedal, which I'll obviously have on the ground, the machine turns on and you can see that this starts moving. This is the seconds counter and that is the current output. Now there's no material in there, so nothing's happening. Now this right here is a piece of one inch by one inch solid steel. Um, this would be something that takes a little bit of time to heat up, even with a torch or in a forge. And I'm going to show you how efficiently and quickly I can heat this up. Now, if you watch this number right here, this is the number of seconds that this thing is running. I'm going to speed up the video, but you'll be able to see the number of seconds running right here. So right now we're at about 40 seconds. I'm getting a pretty good orange heat. And the scale is starting to pop off at about 50 seconds. And what's really cool about this is you see how close my hands are to this piece of material. There is, this is still pretty much ice cold where my hands are. And look at how hot that is in less than a minute less than a minute and I can grab it right here as someone that has burned themselves badly blacksmithing. This is amazing. So one of the very important things about a machine like this is the coil itself and the size that it is. Now this coil came with the machine and it's really made for heating a crucible, but I'm obviously using it for material. So now this is one inch bar stock and you can see I've got um, a little bit of distance around it. You know, I can, I can roll it around it and there's some, some room there. Now, ideally, you would want this coil to be as close to the material as possible without touching it. This insulation helps it from arcing, but I have seen a lot of people use these coils without the insulation and apparently it works just fine as long as you don't arc in between them while the machine is running. So if I were to try to heat a piece of material like this flat bar, it would work but you can see there's a huge amount of area around it, so it's not gonna work very efficiently and you might not get the maximum temperature that you could versus if I made a coil that was a little more form factor that would fit around this. There is distilled water that gets pumped through these coils, so it's very important that you get a watertight fit here. And because this machine comes from China, these are metric threads. So what I'm going to be doing, making or purchasing, is making basically an adapter that'll get me from this, which is a eight millimeter copper coil tube, to a quarter inch coil. And you, by just unscrewing these when the machine is off and there's no water pumping through it, you can swap this coil out very easily. To show you the difference in efficiency, I'm going to heat up this piece of one inch by eighth inch flat bar. And at first I'm going to do it flat like this. And then I'm going to bend the end up and you'll see when, the, when that piece is closer to the coils, how much faster it heats up. So that's about 30 seconds. And you can see it heated this in about the same amount of time that it heated the round bar, but this is much less material. So it should have gone much faster. Now, in order to make that more efficient, we would just make a coil that fit this material a lot better.
So I've bent the edge of this up a little bit. Now, because that's gonna be closer to the coils, look how fast I can get this edge to a sparking, you know, basically forge welding heat. Now, granted, it's already a little hot, but look how fast that is already melting just because it's so much closer to the coils. This is burning itself up. That's a really good example of why the distance around your workpiece to the coil is super important. I've literally melted the end of this just by changing its shape so that it's just that much closer to the coil itself. Pretty crazy. So for me in particular, an application that I really want to use this for is putting kind of a decorative edge on a piece of round bar. So I'm going to heat up this one inch round bar and then I'm going to bring it over to my guillotine tool, which is back here, which you may remember from an earlier video. I mean, this piece is still red hot, so I can keep working on it if I want to. So I don't think I'm winning any awards with this uh, sculpture. But well, you get the point. So for a quick practical comparison, the other day I had to heat up the end of some eighth wall one by one square tube so I could crush it down to make an adapter for this other project that I'm working on. Now at the time I didn't have this set up so I used my oxyacetylene torch. I heated it up with a rosebud then I crushed it on the anvil. Now it took a while just to get the torch set up and get everything going. Let me show you how fast it is with this. That's 30 seconds of heat. I'm done. In less than a minute. Obviously gotta let that cool, but this will 100% save me time. All right, one more cool thing to mention is that I've been heating all those pieces on the end, but you don't have to, right? Anywhere that I can push this thing through the coil, I can heat there. So this is a piece of half by half bar. And if I wanna heat this right in the center and give it a, a really isolated bend, I can do that. Obviously this is not gonna be ideal for this size coil, but it'll still work. And if I had a more purpose built coil, I could get an even more precise heat so you can see I'm getting hot right in that one spot. And if I just don't move it back and forth, the heat will stay really isolated. See, I can grab it on both sides. It's still ice cold on both sides. And then I can pull this thing out and bend it. So a perfectly isolated bend, like barely even any scale popped off around it because the heat was so well controlled right into that one spot. Uh, it didn't even really twist that much and I did that pretty much as fast as I could. Now I guess the question of what does this cost and how would you use it if you weren't necessarily a blacksmith? Now I'm not a blacksmith by any means, um, all my friends would agree to that as well. But uh, I do a lot of heating and bending of metal. Um, every now and then I do want to add like a little detail to something. But mainly I use a torch for heating up bar stock to make brackets, stuff like that. 
Um, this is going to save me a ton of time just in that application. Now, this setup is not necessarily very cheap. This particular induction forge is about $1,200, and then the water chiller is about $400 for this size. Now, you can get a slightly smaller one. This one's a 25 liter. Um, I've seen people use a 12 liter, but I've heard that if you use this for a long time, the water will get so hot that this thing will fail to work. Now this has sensors in it that monitors the flow of the water. Um, and I don't know that it monitors the temperature of the water, but I know if the water gets too hot, this will eventually cycle out and it will shut off. So I just figured I might as well spend the extra money and get a little bit larger of a water chiller, the, the size that's recommended, just so I don't have any issues down the line. So now when you buy a machine like this, it's not wired with anything. It just has two terminals in the back. So I added basically an electrical box on the back, and then I bought a six-gauge welder's extension cord so I would have a really heavy-duty connection that would allow me to run a longer cord to get around the shop. Now this thing could pull upwards of 40-something amps, so you want to make sure you have it plugged in to a really solid power source. Now this cart that it's on, I bought from Harbor Freight. It was about a hundred bucks. And what I like about it is that it has this drawer on the side that I can store all the stuff that kind of pertains to this to it. And it's rated for about 350 pounds. This unit's not very heavy, so it's gonna work out really well. One thing I will add is if you go ahead and get this cart in particular from Harbor Freight, it's not high enough to fit the 25 liter water chiller underneath the drawer. So what I had to do is I had to use some two by two aluminum angle and I cut it to about six inches and made basically a little riser for these legs and it made it fit perfect. Um, I prefer this cart over the other one that people use simply because of this drawer which will be able to hold all the coils and all the parts and tools without having to have them all sitting around. What I like about this is that I could bring this around my shop to use it wherever I want. If I want to do some blacksmithing over in the machine shop because I have a little more room around me, all I have to do is unplug this, bring it in the room, and plug it in. It's super quiet. It doesn't produce any fumes. The only smoke that comes off of it is whatever burns off the metal. Um, and for me, not having a ton of time to work in the shop on sort of my own projects, lighting the forge takes a while, right? And I have to worry about propane being in my shop and I have to ventilate and all these other things. So this is going to be huge for me. Um, all in, it's about $1,600 of an investment, but if you really do this kind of stuff and you have a limited amount of time, or if you're in a space where maybe you can't have propane, but you still want to do a little bit of blacksmithing, especially if you're in like a basement shop or a small garage shop where you don't feel comfortable having a forge or an oxyacetylene torch, I think this is an amazing option. Um, like I said, plug and play. It does take a little bit of kind of working on once you get it. Um, I had to use an adapter to get from the chiller lines into the back of the machine. But I'm going to share links down in the description to a guy named Derek Melton's website who has a ton of information about these. And I'll throw some links down there to get this machine, some links for the water chiller that I used, the hose adapters, and the extension cord. Now, if you go online, you're going to see that there are a couple different versions of basically the same machine. This black one is from a company called US Solid. Now, I chose to go with the US Solid one just because it was purchased from a company with a little bit better support. Um, they have a location in Ohio. Now, the machine is imported, but I just felt that I would get better service from US Solid versus one of the ones that comes straight from eBay from a Chinese seller. You know, there's all English writing on this where some of the other ones have a lot of Chinese on them. I don't know, I just felt like I was getting a little bit more quality of a product by going this route. So if you wanna get the US Solid one, check out the links down below because I think this one's pretty good. As far as the coils, you can make your own, but there are also a bunch of people that sell pre-made coils, so I'll throw some links to those guys down below as well. Right now, I only have the coil that it came with, but I plan on making a bunch and, you know, kind of figuring out what's going to work out best for me. And, you know, getting a whole arsenal of different size coils will take me a little bit of time, but once I have them, they'll be good forever. Um, and I think that it'll really help my workflow. It's just a matter of undoing these nuts and pulling the coil off, putting a new one on and moving through it that quickly. Overall, I'm super excited about having this thing in the shop. Um, blacksmithing is something that I really enjoy and it's something that I really don't have an opportunity to do that much just because I just don't have the time to dedicate to setting up the forge and doing all the things that I mentioned before. With this, you know, I've kind of just been dabbling around with it for the last couple of days and I've been able to mess around with making some tapers and doing some of the decorative stuff on the guillotine tool. And for me, this is gonna open up a lot of possibilities in my own workflow and stuff that I wanna do with knife making and tool making and all sorts of different things. 
I also think that this thing will be great to have with the power hammer because I can heat up stock that's about sized for that hammer and work on it just that much more efficiently without having to have a forge running in my background all day. The only downside to this is if you are someone that is used to using a forge, especially in a colder climate, this isn't going to heat your shop the way a forge is. Uh, so, you know, I guess think about that. Now, I know there are going to be questions about how much electricity this is using. Um, I've read some articles online and from what I've read, these things are incredibly efficient and they're not going to like spin your meter uh, off its axis. So do your own research, obviously understand how much your electricity costs, but read some of the articles that I put down below about these and, you know, see for yourself. Personally, um, I think that the cost of propane and the convenience of it outweighs whatever electricity costs it might generate um, because it can't be doing much more than, you know, maybe my plasma table or my big welder when I really have it cranked up. Plus, you're only really running it um, with that intense amount of electricity through it for 30 seconds to a minute, depending on what you're heating. So when it's just idling, it's probably barely using any electricity at all. That about does it for this video. Uh, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited about this thing and I think it's a great addition to my shop. I also think it's something that a lot of people just don't know about. Um, I didn't know about these until I started seeing them on the internet and then I was fortunate enough to try one for myself at last October's Maker Camp in uh, East Durham, New York. Now, my friend Cliff Dufton, who is an incredible blacksmith, uses these a lot and I happen to be able to test his out, kind of ask him some questions about it and as soon as I saw how fast it worked, I was sold. So my goal here with the channel is not only to bring some cool projects to show you how I build things, but also to show you cool tools um, and, you know, kind of things that I think will improve people's shops. I know this is something that I wish I had years ago. So anyway, check out the links down below for all the information about where you can get this set up, all the stuff that I used and some helpful information about it. Stay tuned for another video about this once I get some coils together and I'll give you kind of an impression of once I've had it for a while, what I think of it and maybe some things that I've changed or issues that I've come up with. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment down below if you have questions or comments about the induction heater. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, I posted a bunch of videos and stuff as I was setting this up. You can follow me right here at Make Everything Shop on Instagram, and uh, that's about it. So stay tuned for more videos. The next thing that I have coming in this sort of genre is I got all the parts I need for the power hammer to get running. I'm really excited for that and I have a really fun project that I made with my friend Anthony Panza coming out soon so I hope you're there to watch it. Again I'm Chris Zep from Make Everything. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next one.